when you talk about the process that led up to you becoming a state champion? I didn't win an individual state championship until I was a senior, although I made finals as a, as a sophomore. Um, I, I lost in the finals as a sophomore. Um, and I took fifth, actually, as a junior. Um, had a really tough match with Gandhi Hill uh, in the semifinals and uh, lost in overtime there and then uh, lost one of my wrestlebacks. You know, a little bit, uh, little bit of adversity there as well, you know didn't do a very good job of bouncing back. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. When you think back, when you think back to your high school career, what do you think was the difference, uh, or was there any difference to your approach, comparing your approach as an underclassman when you didn't uh, win it? Was there a difference in your preparation as an underclassman compared to your preparation as a senior when you did get over the top? Yeah, I, I I would say it it evolved. Uh, my pro, my my approach to the sport evolved certainly. Um, you know, as a freshman, I you know I I was pretty good as a freshman. I but I, I struggled a little bit early. I think I was like lost six of my first ten matches or something like that, and then rattled off like you know twenty or thirty wins in a row. Um, but I, I was still trying to figure out if I was any good at this. Despite having wrestled most of my life, I didn't know what it meant to to be really good at the sport. Um, it wasn't probably until I was a a sophomore, having uh, made the state finals, where I really believed that you know I had a future in the sport, and and that was really a turning point for me. A little bit of success there um, really helped me to to understand that I I had the potential to be to be very good at it. And then my junior and senior year, you know, it's just hard work. I mean, just doing things that other people aren't willing to do. I'm running at night, uh, lifting at night, you know, getting uh, getting workouts in uh, at, at the high school at night after practice, you know, um, doing those type of things. Just making sure that I wasn't leaving anything to chance. You know, that, that regardless of how, how it turned out, I know that I was, I was the most prepared I could be for whatever came my way. Um, and, and I think that approach really carried over for, for both those years, even though despite not winning it as a junior, you know, I still still kept that same approach going into my senior year, especially my senior year. I just, want, just want, didn't want to leave anything to chance. I wanted to make sure that, that I was doing things that other people weren't willing to do. Will you talk about the college recruiting process? Were you considering any other schools or and what ultimately led you to uh, decide to commit with um, uh, Central Michigan? How, how, how did that go? Yeah, I was being recruited by, um, by Michigan a little bit, um, Michigan State, um, Purdue, and Central Michigan, where I, ended up, where I ended up going. My brother had already been, he'd been up at Central for in the second year. He's a couple years older than me, so... He was there. Another former teammate of mine, Kenny Rums, was was also at Central. So I'd been up to the campus on, on a number of occasions, um, and then ultimately, Casey Cunningham and Devon Gray, you know, they decided that they were they were going to go to Central. And I figured if we get a bunch of like minded people in the same room working towards the same thing, we could accomplish some pretty good things. And Coach Brelly did a great job of surrounding myself and and Devon and and Casey with with those type of people. So. Um, you know, that, that's really, really kind of how I ended up there. Will you talk about what it was like for you when you first arrived at Central Michigan, making a transition from high school level competition to college level competition? I mean, you went on to capture some records in the record book when it was over and done with. But I mean, when you arrived, how did that go for you when you when you first uh, got there? No, I was far from the man, that's for sure. Um, uh, there was a, a guy there by the name of Scott Bightley um, from Sparta. He's a couple times state champ uh, that was in the weight class. He's a senior, um, and there's a lot of other talented wrestlers there. And I think most um, struggle a little bit when they get to college. It's, it's a little bit of a culture shock where everybody in the room is state champ or two times state champ or maybe a four times state champ. You know, um, and so I struggled just like everybody else. I struggled, you know, trying to figure out. You know how to be a student, how to be an athlete. Um, you know how to do all of those things, but 
no, he said for us, we had a lot of support. Coach Brelly made sure that we were we were prepared. Um, just the way that he, he basically scheduled, you know, your day. You know, you had you had uh, you know morning early morning workouts. You know, seven a.m. runs, um, and then your class schedule usually began at eight, and then you got you know practice from three to six, lifting from seven to nine, um, study session somewhere in between there. So, so that that he did a really good job of making sure that you know the distractions were minimized. Some of the things that other college students um, involved with it was really hard to do because because of the schedule that we had to keep. Um, but as far as the wrestling goes. Um, you know, it was, it was tough. I struggled. I mean, I think it was probably a month before I got my first real takedown on anybody that had been in the room for more than a year. Um, and so, so it was, it was a lot to get used to, you know, having to go from, you know, being able to score at will in high school to, uh, you know, trying to eke out a, an escape in practice, you know? Um, and so it's just a matter of taking those little victories day by day and, and, and being, being resilient enough to, to not give up. I had gotten in a car accident in June, um, and I had to have my spleen removed, and so that kind of set me back a little bit, but I went up early because my brother lived up there, and uh, so I got to get involved in some summer workouts um, pretty early on. So by the time school started, I was starting to click on all cylinders as far as wrestling was concerned. Um, you know, so that was, you know, two, three, four months after the fact. Um, but it was, uh, you know, by then, you know, once you got used to the schedule, you added the academics involved and, and all that stuff, um, you know, things started dialing after a couple months. Now, moving forward, um, will you talk about your, your own individual um, uh, pre-match mindset? You know, um, you know, let, let, let's say, you know, uh, you're, you're, you guys are at a duel or an open tournament or something and, you know, you're looking over there and you know that, you know, uh, you're up next, or, or, or maybe you're the match after the next one or whatever, but you know that uh, your time is coming. Um, what, what are you thinking? What, what were you thinking, and what, what, how, how did you get yourself uh, ready uh, uh, in your pre-match? Yeah, it's body right, um, you know, first of all. Like, you're about ready to, you're, you're halfway through the first period, and, and, you know, for me personally, the way I did that, I, I was wrong, I'd scared, like, I do all those things, jump rope, a little bit, a lot of stance and motion, a lot of shadow wrestling, but, but, you know, removing all the negativity out of your mind, you know, kind of a, a lot of visualization during that process, you know, seeing yourself, you know, scoring, seeing yourself, you know, in the turn and kind of going through the match the way that you hope it will, will turn out. Um, you know, you just got to get your mind right. You got to get your mind right to prepare, um, regardless of who the opponent is really, um, you need to see yourself winning the match before you ever step out on the mat. Now, moving forward, um, you did uh, end your career, at least at Central Michigan, uh, in the top five uh, in career pins, and you're also in the top ten in pins in a season. So I I'm, I'm, I'm just curious if you can think back. W were those specific goals that you set for yourself, or was it a situation where, you, you just went up there and you, you just you just did the best you could and, and at the end you look back and those goals happen to be accomplished. I, I mean, what was that process like? Did, did you actually intentionally set out for those? Uh, yeah, kind of funny story about that. I really, um, I my last couple of years in college, I wasn't allowed to pin anybody until Coach Brelly told me it was okay. Wow. Um, or I think, or I think I would have been able to at least knock on the door of uh, Mr. Vogel. <laughs> But I wasn't allowed to put anybody away. I, Coach really wanted me to focus on, on you know, being in shape and, and continuing to grow as a wrestler. So I, there were times where I had to let people off their back or, um, you know, miss a few opportunities as, as a result of that. So um, if I didn't adhere, then, then there was hell to pay for that. So, <laughs> so I, 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 usually, I usually listen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, I, as far as, you know, listen, I think great wrestlers put themselves in positions that they're great in, and for me it just happened to be, uh, you know, a couple of pinning combinations that I was I was, was really particularly good at. And, uh, you know, so I just tried to put myself in those positions as, as I could. Now we're going to switch gears in, 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 in terms of uh, your perspective as a coach. Uh, we know you're, you're the head coach over at Warren Woods Tower. 
Um, how, how would you uh, describe your your approach to uh, 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 high school coaching? Um, evolving, you know, I think it's different every year with every group of kids. Um, you know, but I think I think really it's um, it's just about trying to get the most out of kids. You know, a lot of times uh, as a coach, you can you can see beyond your own athletes' uh, limitations. You know, I think you get them to believe in themselves the way that you believe in them, and if you can get that to happen, uh, your rest, your athletes, you know, will will achieve the things that that they're setting out to. And, and you know, to be honest with you, sometimes they don't even know how good they're going to be. Um, and I think that's that's probably the best part of being a coach is, is helping kids do things they didn't think were possible. Now, moving on, I, I want to ask you this. Um, I, I ask a lot of guys this, and it's interesting, different, different uh, answers and different perspectives. Um, when it comes to mental toughness, when it comes to mental toughness, from your perspective, in your opinion, Coach, do you believe that that is a trait that is innate, meaning that uh, uh, some kids just have it and some kids just don't? Or is that a character trait that can be nurtured and and developed within within uh, your wrestlers? Well, to be honest with you, I think it's a little bit of both. I think some kids are more receptive to the process that it takes to become mentally tough. You know, um, you can work a kid. Like I said, when I was talking about, you know, how you get the most out of kids, it's really about training their mind while you're training their body. And I think that if you can if you can push kids a little bit further each day, by the time it's all said and done, they'll have gone, they'll have made up miles, you know, over the course of their career. And I think, you know, some kids don't know that they're tough, you know, they, they, they need to go through that. They haven't, they haven't had adversity. Uh, and they, and, and I just think when you can put them in those situations, they find out their character gets revealed. And, and sometimes, you know, that's, that's a good thing. You know, they, they realize that, man, I, I really can do this. And that's, that's where true confidence comes from, is, is being able to, to get through things that are difficult physically and mentally. How would you describe your program if an eighth grader is looking to um, join uh, uh, your team as a student athlete next year? Um, what, are, what, what are the expectations and, and, and what can they, what can they uh, anticipate walking into? Well, you know, I think it's a it's a pretty uh, pretty nurturing environment. I mean, we try to do the best we can to bring kids along. Um, I, our, I'm not going to show you it at all. There's there's an expectation of, of hard work. Um, you know, there's an expectation um, of trying to do the right things both on and off the mat. Um, you know, taking care of your schoolwork. You know, being being first and foremost and you know, being a good person, we try to hold our kids accountable to, to those things, man. Um, the sport of wrestling teaches a lot of lessons. Among them is, is you know, like how to deal with, with other people and how to be a team, how to be an effective member of a team. Um, so, so I mean, I, I just, and it, it's difficult, you know. I um, mean, wrestling is a hard sport. It's the best sport because it's the hardest. And, and so, I don't know, our team, I, I think, is, We've, we've got a culture of, of hard work in, a, in our room. Uh, the expectation is that you're going to come in and you're going to work hard, you're going to give your best effort, and then we're going to help you find whatever success is to you. Um, so so that's, I mean, that's kind of just an expectation to, 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 to do your best. In closing, um, just want to try to get you to reflect a little bit Um back you know uh over your wrestling journey and, and and it's still not over with for you you know you're in the second part of it where where, where you're crossing over into uh, uh being a coach and, and and molding these young men now but when you look back um can can you talk about uh, uh who were some of the um uh coaches and, and 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 mentors and things of that nature that um, really, really, really contributed to your development and your growth and into where you're at right now? Well, I've was, I was been very fortunate. I've been blessed with some, some really great people around me, first and foremost, being my parents who were very supportive um, and, uh, you know, really drug us around the country for, for most of my childhood to, to develop and, and uh, 
and, and get better at wrestling. You know, um, so I, I would say them first, and you know, Coach Sam Lamine, uh, he was my high school coach, and Mr. Uh, Vito Delia. Uh, these guys were instrumental in, and you know, kind of showing me I could be, you know, I, I could be something. And and so I thank them a lot, and then ultimately, you know, Coach Borelli at Central Michigan and uh, Sean Charles. Um, you know, those guys, those guys really um, did a great job of helping me navigate um, college life and, and uh, you know, understanding what it is to be a man. That's so awesome. I got nothing but thanks for those guys. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time out, uh, Coach, and um, I'll be in touch. Okay, I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the time. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good one. Yep, you too.